Hello everyone and welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and this is my video channel on YouTube where I talk about all the crafty things that I like to do. So welcome. Welcome if you're a new viewer. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Thank you so much for stopping in. So it's been... I don't know, like a month since my last episode. I'm sorry about that. February of 2021 was the busiest month because of so many reasons. <laughs> and I will get into those later on in the episode. Um, what I have to share with you today are a few things that I've been working on, some knitting, some spinning, and of course, talking about the knit along <laughs> I'm hosting over on Ravelry and then just kind of what's been going on consuming up all the time in my life. So let's get into it. <sighs> so I did record an episode in February and then I didn't have time to edit it and post it on the channel. <laughs> Uh, awful. Yeah, I have this video footage and I never got around to editing it and yeah, so I'm just recording a new one <laughs> because I can't even remember what I was going to splice together. So yeah, I'm just starting over. So <laughs> uh, in February, I did finish um, the baby blanket that I was working on. I washed it, I blocked it. It is knit out of 100% acrylic yarn, uh, but still laying it out flat after washing it just helps smooth out some of the kinks. Uh, and I think it looks fantastic. Uh, let me just open this up so you can see the full effect. Maybe not quite the full effect. <laughs> Um, so I did knit this out of two skeins of Lion Brand Mandala yarn. The colorway is Centaur. I used two balls of Centaur. So I knit the ball from the outside in and then the second ball from the inside out. So it reversed the order of the stripes. <laughs> And it looks pretty fantastic. Uh, so this is going to be a pattern that I release next month in April of 2021. Um, so this will be a baby blanket pattern. Uh, it was quite delightful, especially with the self-striping yarn to work on this. Let me get closer. <laughs> uh, so it's a really short... Uh, pattern repeat and just has these lacy bits in there and it was just a nice thing to work on while watching television so yeah it's finished uh, lots of yardage with the two skeins so this is probably like a thousand yards which is great for my annual uh, total I keep track of how many yards I knit up and spin up each year. <laughs> this is a good chunk. So I did finish this baby blanket. I'm not sure what I want to call the pattern yet, but I'm sure it'll come to me. So this is finished. Um, this blanket is going to be donated to um, someone, <laughs> some organization. Um, I was thinking Project Linus. I did hear back from my local drop-off point. I don't know why I missed this email, but I did. Um, they are still accepting blankets during the pandemic, and there's no uh, extra special measures that I need to take as a donator um, because they are washing the blankets and things before they distribute them. So they said, I can just drop it off. No need to do anything extra, which is great. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that will be given away um, later, later this year, probably during the summer, when I have time to venture out and find this place. <laughs> um, I also finished a pair of socks. Um, and so this will be a pattern 
uh, design that gets released at the end of this month, uh, later here in March. So these are my Raging River socks. I had knit a pair previously out of, this is, um, oh, what is the yarn? Oh, I can picture the two gentlemen who dye this yarn. Um, Leading Men Fiber Arts. That's <laughs> Leading Men Fiber Arts. This is on their BFL base. Uh, but I wound this ball up a few years ago and did not keep the tag with it. So I don't know the colorway name. Uh, but it's this beautiful navy with um, some flecks of purple in it. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, but yeah, so I knit it out of this darker color and then I wanted to see what it looked like in a lighter color. <laughs> so um, yeah, I finished these. This yarn is Malabrigo, um, their sock base in uh, the colorway is Indecita. Uh, so it's greens and blues <laughs> and I did notice this later when I was painting my nails. Um, I have greens and blues for my nails. So when I was knitting on these socks, I was like, wow, these hardcore match, don't they? So I wasn't even thinking about it, but yeah, it must have been in my mind when I was painting my nails because here they are. <laughs> um, but yeah, so these are finished, which means... Um, all I really need to do is finish writing up the pattern and take some pictures and then it will be ready for release, which is awesome. So yeah, I did a uh, heel flap and gusset because that's my new favorite <laughs> and just a standard toe. And yeah, so both of these socks are um, knit up for members of my family. I can't tell you who because I don't know who watches and I don't want to spoil any gifts. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those are finished. Yay. And look at how much I still have left over. <laughs> so much. I don't understand um, because these are knit for someone with um, feet on the larger size. Uh, and yet I still have so much left over. I didn't use any contrasting color for the heel or toe or cuff. It's all out of this skein. So this was a hefty, um, hefty skein here I had. Pretty nice. So I do have one other sock on the needles. Uh, I did finish the first sock just a few days ago. Yeah, it was probably like four or five days ago that I finished this first sock. And the second one, I am on the, on the heel flap. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is being knit out of Patton's Croy sock yarn. Uh, I am using two balls. So this took one 50 gram ball to knit this one sock. I have a second ball for the second sock. This colorway is Turquoise Jacquard. It's Patton's Croy. And you can see I got it on sale. <laughs> so I love a good sale. Um, the colors are not my favorite. Um, in the ball, it looks really cool. And then when I was knitting it up, I just didn't think it looked that great i don't know i just don't understand these black stripes in here but whatever uh, heel flap and gusset <laughs> no contrast uh, it's just all knit out of the same ball uh, and you can see on the second sock that the balls almost lined up so <laughs> this bothers me so much when um, they're just off by a smidge. See if I scoot this down a little, then the stripes line up. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things <clears throat> where if I was paying attention, I would wind off a little bit off of one of the two balls and then make the stripes line up. 
or um, another thing I've done is um, knit them in reverse order. <laughs> uh, of course, with these colors, it wouldn't be the way the stripes are. It wouldn't be super obvious that I was reversing the order, but anyway, um, yeah, I I originally cast on these socks. Um, brainstorming the Raging River sock pattern, but these stripes are so busy um, that you couldn't really see the pattern all that well. So I cast on with the Leading Men Fiber Arts yarn, uh, and then the pattern you could see. <laughs> and it, it read so much better um, visually. So I ripped that out here. I almost had the sock completely done. I ripped it out because it just looked messy with the, the stripes and the pattern. It was just, it was too much going on. You couldn't tell. It's too busy. So I ripped it all out and um, I just did two by two ribbing. So these are going to be nice socks to wear um, hiking in some boots. Um, they're going to stay up with the ribbing. Um, and yeah, so I'm knitting these for Michael. Uh, because I've knit more socks for myself than for him. Michael's my husband, by the way. Uh, and so I need to get his sock drawer caught up to mine. <laughs> um, so yeah, the second sock is, like I said, I'm on the heel flap. I'm using US size one needles, two circulars. These are needles from Knitter's Pride, I believe. And um, yeah, it's just, it's kind of boring since it's just um, two by two ribbing and the stripes aren't exciting to me anymore, which is just kind of sad, but uh, I just want to finish them. I want to finish them so that there are finished socks, which I can hand over um, to the recipient and then move on to something fresh and exciting. Um, but because I did basically knit a whole sock while trying to brainstorm that Raging River pattern. And then I um, frogged it and started over. I think that's when I kind of lost the love for the, this yarn um, is when I had to start over. So maybe I should have just set it aside for later. <laughs> but anyway, I will finish this pair and then um, be able to add them to his sock drawer. And then I did a little bit of spinning, just a little bit, on my Turkish drop spindle. Uh, so this is a drop spindle from Jerry Brock, who um, creates these uh, Turkish drop spindles out of various types of wood. I do not remember what this is. I have the, um, I have the label packaging somewhere in this room <laughs> um, but it's got uh, the phases of the moon um, carved in here which is fun so i'm spinning up some merino 100 percent merino which i got from um oh mm, and i'm trying to think of the name um mohair and more that's it mohair and more out of texas um they had a booth at dfw fiber fest um both times i've attended <laughs> and uh, i picked out this beautiful gray uh, merino and they have so many lovely fibers um, they have a great website super affordable if you want some um, fiber they have so many um, types available uh, but this is the last ounce out of four ounces I purchased from them um, at least of this I have more in a vacuum sealed package <laughs> um, with the hopes of spinning a sweater for my husband um, but uh, yeah I started this on my drop spindle and I wanted to finish all four, four ounces on the drop spindle so three of them are spun up on the, on the shelf this is the last ounce to get through so I made a little bit of progress on here um, I am finding though that the furniture we have in our living room is not 
conducive to my drop spindle. Like I have to sit up on the edge of the couch and then because our couch sits kind of low to the ground, it's not like I can get a lot of length out of this. Um, so yeah, great for my spinning wheel because I kind of lean back and relax, spin on the wheel. But with the drop spindle, I can't lean back because you got to be able to let it hang and spin. So yeah, I don't know. But it's super fun. I am doing a chain ply on the fly. So I'm spinning up the singles and then wrapping it on here for temporary storage. Then when I get enough to do a bit of plying, um, I'll unravel it back, do the chain ply, and then keep repeating the process. So when all of this comes off the spindle, it's plied and finished and ready to go, which is lovely. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is just living in one of my, um, this is one of my bags, the Art House Creations. It's just a flat sack. Um, there's no um, interfacing in here. It's just two layers of fabric. There are no closures, no snaps, no zippers, no things for the fiber to get stuck on and ripped and torn. <laughs> uh, and it just drapes over my arm. So um, this is nice if I want to take this um, and I want to stand outside in the backyard or something while spinning or at fiber events, which hopefully will happen someday in the future <laughs> again. Um, and so I can walk around with my spinning. Or knitting or whatever but it's holding spinning right now and I do hope to get back into sewing at some point um, we did buy oh yeah let me just don't go off on a tangent quite yet Alicia okay so that's it for things that I've been working on. Let me tell you what I'm wearing. I am wearing lots of green because today is March 14th. So it's almost St. Patrick's Day and I'm not gonna record two episodes in one week. I don't have that much free time. Uh, so I'm wearing green for St. Patrick's Day. I have my green fingernails. Um, so I'm wearing my weekender sweater which is green. I'm wearing a boomerang shawl, which is green. Uh, and I'm not wearing socks right now. And earlier they were green and gray. <laughs> um, but all the green for March. So that's fun. Um, yeah, the weather has been pretty nice. Um, today's daylight savings time. So I thought that I had done a really nice job sleeping in. Um, my body and brain have been horrible about letting me sleep in because I keep thinking about work and it wakes me up. Like you have so many things to get done. You have to wake up. This has been really hard to sleep in. So I woke up this morning and I was like, wow, I am a master of sleeping in. No daylight savings time happened. <laughs> I got an hour for free. So <laughs> we lost an hour cause we spring ahead, but as far as I'm keeping track is like, anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, the weather's been nice. We've had quite a few sunny days. We've been going out on long walks. Um, there is a pipeline apparently that runs through our neighborhood and it like forks off in so many ways. Um, but it's, it's gated off and you can walk. It's, it's a walking path. Um, but there are signs like right that there's a pipeline so it goes between the houses um it's hard to explain i'll have to take a video next time we go out um but we've been walking along that and exploring all the different forks of this pipeline also i feel like i need to do some research because why does a pipeline have that many intersections um, going off of it. Like, wh why? I'm confused. <laughs> what is in this pipe anyway? Um, anyway, um, 
Yeah, so it's been nice weather. The garden is is doing well. We did have some frosty mornings. I was a little bit worried. Um, some of my plants are sunburned, which is not so great. It means I didn't do as good of a job hardening them off as I thought I did. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm hoping that my kale plants make it. But if not, I learned a lesson, and that's okay. Um, the peas I transplanted outside, doing amazing. Um, the garlic I planted last fall, awesome. The onions I transplanted outside, doing well. The spinach I transplanted outside, doing really well. Um, but the kale, cabbage, and broccoli, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe I transplanted them too soon. Like I didn't let them get um, enough of their true leaves. They still have their baby leaves. Maybe that was too soon. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but I'm very excited about the garden. I'll have to take you out there next time. Today it is raining. It is a rainy, rainy day here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I don't really feel like filming in the rain. Sorry. <laughs> next time. <laughs> I will film on one of these sunny days and I will make sure to put it in the next episode for sure. Um, because the garden's going to take off. I just, I just know it. And it's going to be nice to document it when everything's still a baby. <laughs> and then we can see, hopefully, huge plants uh, later in the summer. So... So February was the busiest month ever because I am going through the tenure process at work. So I uh, was hired on as a tenure track professor. Um, so I'm going through the tenure process, which takes three years. It's involved and I won't go into all the details. Um, but at <laughs> um, so every year during this process, so three times, I have to write uh, a big paper, a self-reflection paper about uh, what it is I'm working on, what I've learned, what went well, what didn't go well, um, who did you talk to to get help about this, why did you talk to that, oh gosh. Um, and mine was, this year it was due in February, uh, towards the end of February, and so um, it was intense and really stressful because I had to put, I had to finish that paper, which involved meetings with my committee that supports me and you know, talking about it is stressful and then writing about it is stressful and then trying to remember, don't forget to say this in that paper is stressful. And so, um, I just didn't really have the energy to do anything else but that because it's such a big deal um in in this process and you know i'm not tenured yet um i could still get a letter saying well we gave you a shot but i don't think it's going to work out and i don't want that to happen so Anyway, um, so I turned that paper in. I feel so much better. I feel so relieved. Um, I, I know I'm going to be fine. Um, it's just, uh, you know how it is. You go through the evaluations at work, and that's what this is. Um, it's an evaluation from many points of view, and <laughs> it's a lot. And it's a lot while teaching remotely, where I'm not able to connect with my colleagues or students very well. Um, it's hard. It's really hard. So it kind of got to me. Um, the first paper I had to turn in didn't seem nearly as stressful. Um, this one's a lot more stressful. And I think it's because of the 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 pandemic this it's been a year since 
um, I was told, hey, you need to find a way to teach classes online from your house and never come to campus, which is hard. Um, so there was a lot to write about. Um, but it was, it was kind of tough to reflect back on that and say, you know what? I didn't do a great job that first, you know, those first few weeks that we were online, which is understandable, but I have a hard time with that. I have a hard time admitting I didn't do something very well. Speaking of which, <laughs> I shared on Instagram, I tried making macaroons, macarons, I don't know how you say it, um, those adorable, colorful little cookie sandwiches that just look delicious every time I see pictures of them or walk by them in the store or anything. And, uh, gosh, I can't remember her name, but I follow her on Instagram and she does, she makes the most gorgeous sourdough bread and macaroons and all the glorious baked goods. And uh, this woman is a genius. She is just so talented and inspiring. Her pictures are inspiring. So I was like, I want to try this. Oh my gosh, let me put the picture in here. They were awful. They tasted sugary and amazing, but they looked awful. <laughs> so first of all, I put in green food or food coloring. Definitely not enough. I was going for like green St. Patty's Day macaroons. No, no, no. They look like yellowish. Anyway, so I didn't use enough dye. That's the least of my problems. <laughs> uh, when making the meringue, I didn't really get stiff peaks. I got droopy peaks. So that was a problem. And then the consistency just wasn't right because when I piped out the, the macaroon mixture to make the, the cookies, right, the two sides of the sandwich, um, they didn't just, I didn't just pipe it out and it stayed. I piped it out and then it like spilled out. So it wasn't the right consistency. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to blame the recipe. Uh, it was called full, foolproof macaroons. Like, but um, yeah, I, I kept adding more sugar to the meringue because I thought that would help stiffen it up some more. Like maybe it just didn't have enough, which t I could totally be wrong about. But I also felt like there wasn't enough flour in there to, to should have just added more flour. Anyway, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but uh, I am okay with sharing the fact that I made macaroons and they looked horrible. Um, they were not right. <laughs> uh, some of the little cookie things were undercooked. They just stuck to the parchment paper and mm -mm, they were still gooey after they cooled. Um, and then some of them were overcooked, um, but they came off the parchment paper. So we ate those. Um, so I did have to th throw a bunch of stuff away, but it was fun. I still had fun trying it out and making it. I got to try something new, um, totally low stakes. It's not like it's a part of my job or anything like that. So I got to try something new and fun that I could totally fail at and be fine with that. And I did, and I am fine with it. And I'll just try it again and look up a different recipe. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that was fun. So, hey, don't forget to post your finished objects over in the D Hard House podcast group on Ravelry. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Um, basically, if you knit any of my patterns, uh, and in the month that you finish it, you post a picture, um, you get entered in for a monthly drawing for prizes. So, um, 
It could be any pattern. It could be a free pattern, a paid for pattern. Doesn't matter when you started it. If you finish it in the month of March, please go post it over in the March thread on Ravelry. I have the link down below in the description box for you. Um, excuse me. Uh, the winner will receive one of my bags as well as a pattern prize. Uh, there were no entries for the month of February. I understand. It was a busy month. Uh, so this month I will give away two prizes. So two bags and two pattern prizes. Basically the one I was going to give away for February will get transferred over here to March. <laughs> so there will be two chances to win. So don't forget to go post your finished items over there. The um, crisscross headband was released at the end of January. Really quick knit if you want to whip that up. And if you finish multiple projects of my patterns, you can post multiple times. So for example, if you make three crisscross headbands and you finish all three in the month of March, you can post all three as separate entries for the giveaway. Yeah. Uh, and I will be releasing another pattern here shortly. Um, I just need to take pictures of the socks and then the pattern is ready to go. So you'll have another pattern to be able to choose from for a prize as well as one as an entry. So go check that out over on Revelry. All right, folks, I think that's all I have for this time. Uh, and thankfully, I am past a stressful part of my job. And we're finishing up this quarter. Um, we're moving into final exams here soon. And then we'll have spring break. And then we'll start another quarter. <laughs> So until I see you next time, stay safe and healthy and enjoy your craft, whatever it may be. See you next time. Bye.